today on Karambo. Why wasn't I good enough for a daddy? She was a child. And I'm mad. Who had no connection to her father. And I deserve to have yes, a did. daddy. And I never got one. She's about to find out if this woman is her sister. What does your family say about her? That she's not your sister. Years and years of family questions. I'm tired of being a black sheep are still causing issues to this day. I cannot wait to prove everybody wrong. Are these two women sisters? This is 48 years of missing a part of me. A 48-year-old DNA mystery. The truth is about to be unlocked. Welcome to the show. Today we are going to solve a 48-year DNA mystery. My guest Ivory says that she never knew who her father was, and as soon as she learned who he was, he passed away before she could meet him. Ivory found her alleged sister, a woman named Andrea, but when they met, she wasn't welcomed into the family like she was expected. She was upset that Andrea wasn't giving her the sisterly love that she was hoping for. And in fact, Andrea and her family don't believe Ivory is her sister. Andrea claims that her father's last words were that Ivory wasn't his. Today's DNA outcome will finally put this family mystery to rest. Please, everyone, welcome my guest Ivory to the show. Hi, Ivory. Hello, Nisa. -uh, no, 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 I'm doing this again because you look too damn good. <laughs> This is I cute! I, I love it! How are you doing? Oh my gosh. Oh, you look great! Gratitude, I appreciate it. You're that. welcome! Are oh you? my gosh, I'm good. I know we're meeting under difficult situations, yeah. but I'm glad that you were here. I appreciate you for of, having me. Of course. So, I know that your father wasn't around when you were younger. Please tell me about it. Okay. Um, growing up, I never had my dad. Yeah. Um, first, can I tell you this? Mm -hmm, sure. If Andrea is not my sister, then you got a twin, I got a twin, Sarah got a twin. <laughs> Everybody get a twin from Oprah. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, that's just how I feel. Uh -huh. No, I didn't have him in my life. Um, I missed out on that. Yeah. You know, that was just something that was not for me. Mm -hmm. I, um, my siblings, they fathers kind of let me come along. You know, it, yeah. as the kind of sympathy, yeah. don't leave her at home type thing. Yeah, um, and that made me feel not wanted. Yeah. Here you go, my love. Um, definitely um, not love. Yeah. Like, why my daddy didn't want me? Why wasn't I good enough for a daddy? Why everybody else get to have one? <laughs> like, what's wrong with me? So, yeah. Yeah. That, it's that hurt. Different. It hurt. A lot. Yeah. Did your mom ever have you try to meet him? Um, <laughs> when I was 13, she, we were in the car. She got out, went in my grandmother's house. She said, there go your daddy. Yeah. So I went up to him and I said that to him. Yeah, are you my daddy? And he said no and walked away. Mm. And my mom came out the house. I was crying in the car. And she's turned around like, cut all that out. Cut it out. Yeah. And I never asked again. Yeah. Well, I, get, I did, but it was years later. No, I get that. Your mom was probably so hurt from the situation, she didn't know how to process it. Exactly. So her only thing to, her only advice could be to you is do what she was doing, which was shut it down. Yeah. Just don't, don't feel the emotions, don't feel. Yeah, that's what she was telling mm -hmm. me to do. Did but you, I feel. Yeah, of course you did. Uh, did you ever ask your mother why she told you that that was your dad? She said, because it was my father. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, he said he wasn't my father. She said, I said, that's your daddy. Mm. Did you ever and try to talk to him again? No, I never got a chance. Next time I, I saw him, my physical eyes, he was in a cast. So I never got that chance. I hear you. When did you find out that your father went to prison? I knew of an incident when I was younger. I was outside playing with 
um, I didn't know at the time, his son, I knew that was his son, mm -hmm. and an uh, incident happened where he, um, he shot somebody. Mm. After that, um, that's what he went to prison for. Yeah. He didn't go right away, but yeah, that's what he ended up going to prison for. Um, my producer told me that you witnessed that and not knowing that he was I a did. father. I did. I was outside playing with um, his, my brother at the time, I guess. Yeah. I, yeah, well, hopefully he might. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, I was told to go in the house. I couldn't even, I didn't even get a, wasn't allowed to go back over there for like two weeks. Wow. I was not, I had to leave out the back door and I was not allowed over there for like two wow. weeks after that incident. So then you got older. Did you try to ask your mother about him again? No, she called me. Okay. And she said, um, I got something to tell you. Uh-huh. And I need you to come over. So I went over and she said, well, I'm going to tell you this before you see it on the TV. I go, what? Well, your daddy's gonna be on the America Most Wanted. They're gonna reenact the whole situation and da 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 da. And I need to tell you before you see this. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I, I want to know how hard was it growing up for you without your father? Because I'm hearing these moments where you're um, these glimpses that were difficult. How like what was the rest of the time? Horrible. Yeah. Um, I don't know. A lot of people. Well, my sister. That if fathers were in, they were there. I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. I never got the daddy daughter dance. Mm -hmm. I never got my daddy telling me with me and not today. And my daddy telling me I'm his baby girl. I never got that. Yeah. I never got. My kids never experienced him. Yeah. You know, I never got a chance to experience my father. And I'm mad. I'm mad. Yes. Because I never got that. Yeah. And I deserve to have yes, a daddy. Did. Yes, you did. And I never got one. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Come on. I know we're not there yet. Let me just give you a hug. I'm sorry. She looked more like me than I look like me. Like, that's my twin. Are these two women sisters? What does your family say about it? That she's not your sister. Years and years of family questions. I'm tired of being a black sheep. Are still causing issues to this day. I cannot wait to prove everybody wrong. Why my daddy didn't want me? Why wasn't I good enough for a daddy? I never got a chance to experience my father. And I deserve to have yes, a daddy. Did. Yes, you did. Come on, I know we ain't doing it. Let me just give you a hug. I'm sorry. So how did you end up connecting with Andrea? Oh, my goodness. I had told my god sister mm -hmm. um, about my dad. Yeah. And our hairdresser, she was at an appointment, and she was telling our hairdresser about my dad, and then she said his name. And at the time, my hairdresser was dating Andrea's brother. Mm. And she like, wait a minute, that name sound familiar. So she did a couple of phone calls, and she called me, and she was like, I think I might have found your sister, but I'll call you back. And it went like for 30 minutes, like wow. back and forth, yeah. back and forth. And then she called me like, I found your sister. I'm like, I got a sister. Uh, she like, girl, uh, you got a yeah. sister. So, that beauty excited. shop phone chain. <laughs> that beauty shop phone chain. Wow. I was so excited. Yes. And um, I'm like, wow. How was it the first time you met her? I was so shocked. And we both, I'm, I'm quite, I don't know how she felt. And you definitely have to ask her. But she looked more like me than I look like me. Like, you crazy. <laughs> if she not my son, that's my twin. Like, my daddy, I look more like her daddy than her. Like, you got, I, that has yeah. to be my super. Yeah. My, all my siblings, they like, oh my God, I look like nobody in my family. So who am I? Mm. Like, can I belong to somebody? You yeah. know? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. How did she take it when she the, when she got the news that you she, could be her sister? I'm, 
I mean, she was willing to meet me. So um, I came to her house, like they brought me to her house. So I don't think like she was like opposed to it, but I know that because I'm just gonna say that I don't think because her family doesn't totally accept me, like she can't totally accept me. And like she won't open herself mm -hmm. up to me and I, like cause she really don't know. Don't know. So we have like this spurt of a relationship, mm -hmm. but I love her with my soul. And I just want her to love me like that. Yeah. <laughs> Does she ever talk to you about your father? We don't talk about him like that. Yeah. Don't talk about him. No. Why not? Because I don't know. You have to ask her maybe because she not for sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe like they say, everybody just got a twin. Mm. Did she ever talk to her father about you? <laughs> when she first went to go see him in prison or at a point, he said I was his daughter. Mind you, my dad had brain cancer. So when she went through and asked him again, like, cause I was gonna go see him. She was gonna work it out where I could go see him. And he said, I wasn't his daughter, but he was on his deathbed and cancer was eating his brain. So that's what everybody went with. Did you have a chance to meet him when he was in prison? I never got, he died before I could get on the list. Mm. And I know you said that you went to the funeral. What was that moment like for you? <laughs> Weird, like I wasn't really feeling like I belong. Yeah. And, and Because you just told me that Andrea's family was having doubt. I and mean, so yeah, like her brother, definitely, he like, oh my goodness, this is my sister's sister. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot of people don't think that we're related. And they don't think that she's my sister. And that's my sister. Mm -hmm. I don't care. So did any of them make you feel uncomfortable? Some of them made you feel uncomfortable? I'm sorry to hear that. So how, how did you deal with his death? Oh my goodness. When I got the phone call, I was on my way home from work and I was in a cab, maybe like a half a block away from home. And um, my niece called me Andrea's daughter. And I jumped out the cab and I ran the rest of the way home. And I remember collapsing on my porch and just screaming. Cause I was so mad cause he died before I could even have a relationship with him. I was mad because he was gone. I was mad cause I never knew him. I was mad cause I never got to get none of my letters to him. I was mad cause I couldn't hold him or smell him or nothing. Mm. It was just too late. Yeah, yeah. Do you think Andrea, Andrea understands how important this test is to you? I hope she do, because yeah. she had him, and I didn't, and I just, even though I could physically never hug or, you know, anything, but maybe now I could have a piece of him, mm -hmm. and maybe now I can be accepted, because I'm tired of being a black sheep always. Yeah, yeah. I deserve my happy ending. Yeah, you do. My shirt say good news. I'm here for all my good news okay. today, okay? <laughs> well, you know, I, I can't lie to you. I, I pray, hearing your story and meeting you, I, I pray to God that I give you some good news today. Uh -oh. I pray to God. <laughs> I really do hope. But listen, everyone, my guest Ivory says Andrea won't warm up to their relationship until she knows for sure that they are sisters. So everyone, please welcome Andrea to the show. Hi, Andrea, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. Um, hi. So um, how was it meeting Ivory for the first time? What does your family say about it? That she's not your sister. Years and years of family question. I was just really caught in the middle. Are still causing issues to this day. I'm gonna be the secret. Like, that's so wrong. Are these two women sisters? This is 48 years. Stay tuned.
a couple of phone calls and she called me and she was like, I think I might have found your sister. And then she called me and she's like, I found your sister. I'm like, I got a sister. Uh -huh. She like, girl, you got a sister. Yeah. So she looked more like me than I look like me. Like, you crazy. <laughs> that has yeah. to be my super. Yeah. How was it meeting Ivory for the first time? Um, I was really excited mm -hmm. because I felt like, okay, I never had a sister, Yeah. so I was excited. Did your past ever cross before when you were younger? No, never. not at all. Did you hear about her, know about her? Not at all. Mm. So how was your relationship with your father? And I'm so sorry for his passing. Thank you. Um, me and my father, we were close. Um, I always saw him. Um, my mom really didn't want me to be around my dad because of the lifestyle he lived. Um, he sold drugs. He was a big drug dealer. He also used drugs. Mm -hmm. So my mother didn't want me around that lifestyle. Yeah. What did he say to you about Ivory? Well, um, I talked to my father a few times on the phone, but prior to that, my father got in trouble. Um, as Ivory said, he shot my brother's mother. Um, he was on the run. He was on America's Most Wanted. He called me and he told me that that was my sister, that mm -hmm. this was her, this was his daughter. I went along with it. Um, he was in prison for a minute. He told me that this was his daughter. Um, on his deathbed, now it's not my daughter. I'm mm. like, I'm confused now. Mm. Um, How did that make you feel? Because one moment he's saying this, is, this could be your sister, and the next moment he's confusing. saying it's not. Confusing. Yeah. Confusing. Mm. Um, my mom asked him, she entered the room, and her and my grandmother, we were in there together, and she says, let me ask you one question. Is this girl hit your child? And he said, no, leave that alone. So I respected my family by that. I didn't want to disappoint my family because I was always, I, I felt bad for her. Yeah. I felt bad because I was just really caught in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. So they made it where my feelings, didn't, I didn't count. I was just supposed to be like, Always the secret, like my whole freaking life, I'm gotta be the freaking secret. Yeah. Like that's so wrong. Do you feel like you're disappointed your you're disappointing your family by having a relationship with her? Well, yeah, because I respect my mom and I respect my father. I always respected my father. And he was like, you know, he was my dad. I mean, he was he was loved by a lot of people. He was very popular in Royal Oak Township, Michigan. So I didn't want to disappoint my family by, you know, keep putting, you know, her around them. Yeah. And they would make her feel bad. They wouldn't talk to her. What does your family say about her? <sighs> that, that she's not your sister. <laughs> Just point blank, putting you in the middle. Yes, and yeah. that really, you know, it, it, I don't want to hurt. I don't want to hurt my family, so I. It's okay. They I, want she, you to hurt me instead. I love you, and I know you not hurt me, but I'm saying, don't hurt them. Just hurt her. She could take it. Wow. You know, not 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 you, but that's how they keep making me feel. You know what I mean? Yeah. So me and her, we would we would get together. She's always a fun person to be around. So we would get together, but I'm like, this not. <laughs> I'm a bad. <laughs> uh, but I just don't want to hurt my family. I mean, I don't want to. I want to. I don't want her to keep coming around. Yeah. You know, and they and and, and they I, keep hurting her, and, and they keep hurting her, and it. Yeah. I mean, making her feel bad. I know, it hurts. You know, you're in. You, we have a huge family. Yeah. And big gatherings, and nobody to talk to her. 
I cannot wait to prove everybody wrong. Are these two women sisters? This is 48 years of missing a part of me. A 48-year-old DNA mystery. The truth is about to be unlocked. My dad called me and he told me that this was his daughter on his deathbed. Now it's not my daughter. I'm like, I'm confused now. I was just really calling the middle. It's like my whole freaking life, I'm gotta be the freaking secret. Like, that's so wrong. We have a huge family. Yeah. And nobody talked to her. Don't put her in that funeral car. Don't humiliate me. Don't do it. Don't yeah. do it. <laughs> Don't yeah. do it. I wasn't allowed to put her in a family car. Yeah. I wasn't, she shouldn't be in the front. And it's like, everybody in your ear. Yeah. You know, can you I know, just say one thing? Of course you can. If these results come out and you are my sister, I mean, I don't, I know nobody will never apologize to me. But just know, I can't wait. I cannot wait to prove everybody wrong. Cause my mama, my mother, Wilma Sales Harris was not a liar. Wilma Sales Harris knew who she lay down with and she knew what she was doing. Like I always said, nobody was in that room with her but him and her, unless it was a threesome going on that I was unprivy to. <laughs> that's not cool. Yeah. yeah, but it was one more thing that um, I didn't think, my father was married at the time, mm -hmm. and her mother was married at mm -hmm. the time. Oh. So it was a little. Mm -hmm. Got it, so that's why also like. But Papa was, was a Rolling Stone. I get my it. My mama yeah, wasn't was the only something. one. Yeah, yeah I he get was it. He wasn't, she wasn't the only one. Yeah, yeah. My something. daddy was in these streets. Mm. Okay. <laughs> When we talk about family members, we, Andrea, I know that your granddaughter, Alexis, is also here with us. She's in the audience right now. Alexis, stand up for me. Hi. Hey, Alexis, thanks for being here. So I want to know from you, how do you feel about this DNA mystery? I, oh, well, my grandmother, she raised me as her own growing up. So when I did find out that Ivory was my auntie, she's always been TT to me. Like, so it's oh. to, I feel like they look alike, like identical. So I feel like that's my auntie. Even if the results don't come back, that's my auntie. That's still my auntie. Oh. <laughs> How does it feel to know that she just accepted you and loved you from day one? I've been knowing Lexi since she was in her mama's stomach. <laughs> I bought her all her first in my line, like her one, everything. Yeah. That's my baby too. <laughs> so I don't care. Yeah. When not, when I don't care. If she is not my biological sister, I will stay away from her family. But I never leave them alone. Mm. Yeah. Ever. Well, you know, one of the things, one of the things that's a true testament about who you are is I can see your heart. And the fact that you have been rejected and people have told you, like, we're not going to include you, that you would still step up and support and be there as a sister and as a grand, as a, an aunt, like, that's beautiful. Yes. That's beautiful. I love it. So, I so genuinely you love it. Yeah. 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 That's genuine love. I genuinely love that. You said you're ready for your happy ending, so the only way we'll find out if you get that is if we give you these results. Are you ready? <laughs> this, is, this is the results you've been waiting all these years for, to know if this is your sister, to know if he was your father, to know where you belong. Are you ready? Yeah. It's yours to open whenever you're ready. This is... For me, for me, this is everything. This is um, my identity. Yeah. This is 48 years of missing a part of me. Yeah. I know daddy not here no more. Your father. Um, 
but I just believe what my mama said. And I know my mama would not lie to me. She was too straight from the hip for that. No matter what they say, you always gonna be my son. Your kids always gonna be my baby. I'm gonna always love you. And if it's not, you mama, I apologize to your mother. I really do. For doubting her, you know. But I don't doubt mama. Okay? I love you. Okay? A 48-year-old DNA mystery. The answer is unlocked next. No one does nosy better than me. Photos. We found 378 <gasps> photos. You he good what he do, because I don't you know how he fell there. He's a year of snooping, okay? I know you nosy too. Head over to Nosy where you can watch full episodes of the Karamo Show and be nosy with me. If these results come out and you are my sister, I cannot wait to prove everybody wrong. This is the results you've been waiting all these years for. This is 48 years of missing a part of me. Period! 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 I told y'all! I love you! Oh, thank God! Thank God! Thank God! Oh, thank God! Thank God! Oh! Oh my God! Thank God! I cannot lie. I was over here. Oh I was over here praying. I'm like, I'm like, Jesus. Oh my God, I'm so happy for you. Oh my God. I'm so happy for you. You got your good news. You got your good news. I'm sorry, y'all. I apologize. This your moment. I don't know. This your moment. No, I'm 48 years. Like, I, like, people kept saying, like, thanks, your sister. Like, and Trump treated me so bad, man. Like, people treated me so bad. And I still love people. Yeah. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. I show yes, gratitude. Man. Oh my God. I show you so much gratitude. Because oh, I'm going to tell you this. Yeah. No, 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 no. If it was not for you, your team is freaking amazing. And I show so much gratitude. Because <laughs> if it was not for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey. 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 She is. Sister. How does it feel? How does it feel though? This is your sister. I feel great, but I want to say that I apologize for everything you went through. <laughs> I don't care about that stuff no more. <laughs> you my sister. I don't care about that stuff no more. I, 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 I will say this. I hope that I hope that the family members that were there understand that your heart is big, and that even though sometimes pride can come up. And it's easy to be like, you know what, I ain't gonna say nothing, I ain't gonna do nothing. I hope that, I just pray to God that they can release any pride and just say, you know what, it's all right, we're sorry, and then accept you with full arms because you deserve it. Oh, they're gonna accept it. Okay, <laughs> you said, you said ain't no pride, you said nothing. I'm so happy you got your good news Thank today. You so I am too, I'm and so I wanna you say again, it. gratitude to you because you without you, this was not be possible. And then I got to meet my best friend. Cause he was my best friend in my head. And my best friend gave me the good news. We best friend now, girl. We best friend. We best friend. In my head, we best friend. So I appreciate you. You're welcome. I'm so happy to meet you. I love you too. I love you as well. Yes. Oh my gosh, such a great thing. Every listen, friend, stay with us. We'll be right back with more. Okay.
so happy for That's you. Me, Do you remember this story? She said, I got a gambling problem, but I ain't changing for nobody. Her man had a serious gambling addiction. You are not winning in life. Let that sink in. You're about to lose your wife. You're about to lose your family. You're about to be by yourself. Today, they've returned. I know you moved out. Are y'all separated? Are y'all divorcing? What's going on? You are the fire. Get off my stage. So you know that I love checking in with past guests from the show, and I'm so excited to be checking in with Shantia and Ian today. So Shantia and Ian came to the show in November, and Shantia was desperate to prove to her husband that he had a gambling problem. Let's take a look at the last time they were here. She has over $13,000 worth of debt because of her husband's gambling obsession. I'm the Parlay King. She said I got a gambling problem, but I ain't changing for nobody. The Parlay King himself. Yeah, clap it up. I got OWD, what? obsessive winning disorder. Why did our water get cut off if you don't lose? Shantia's not the only person who thinks that you have a serious problem here. Your cousin, Alonzo. That's funny. She's crying. Bills aren't getting paid. You don't even involve you. You are the problem. It's you. You are the problem. Your family members are here telling you that you have a problem? This is my money. I'm not going to stop loving you, but you going to have that by yourself. So your wife just said that y'all are about to separate. I mean, you. I'm just trying to get money, man. I'm tired of being broke. You are not winning in life. Let that sink in. You're about to lose your wife. You're about to lose your family. You're about to be by yourself. I may have a little bit of a problem with gambling. You took a big step there. And for the first time since you've been out here, I see a man. I don't see a jokester. All right. What I want to do for you is I'm going to pay for credit repair for you so that this credit can get good. You hear me? Joining me now, everyone, is Shantia. Shantia! Hi. How are you, beautiful? I'm good. So how have you been since the last time I saw you? I've been fairly good. I mean, it didn't, it wasn't always that way with me and him. I ended up moving out at the end of November, things get worse before they get better, right? Yeah. So, and that was a big step. You felt like you needed to move out. I know we talked about that, but you knew. Why did you make that decision? Um, things for me and him got worse. They they really did. He didn't get any better. We were fighting a lot. And then I just needed a peace of mind and better place for me and my kids. Good job. I'm, I appreciate you. Yeah, give it up for him, you know, for choosing yourself. I know that can be a hard decision when you're in a marriage that you love someone. Um, it so, was really hard. Yeah. So, um, you know, we talked about your credit, and that was one of the things that I said to you, like, you got to get your credit together because he's <laughs> been gambling, he's put you in debt. So how's your credit going? Oh, my gosh, man. I've got a few things removed from my credit. It's Thanks. great. It's going up. <laughs> when this apartment gets off, it's up. I'm buying a house this year. Good job, good job. I did that because I wanted you to feel Thank like you, you have so some much. support. Thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. Thank uh, you. You're welcome, you're welcome. Like, for me, if I'm giving out something, it needs to be something that's going to actually help somebody to get to another level. So I'm glad that you're utilizing it and that it's working out for you. So I got to go to your man, How, your, your ex-man, or your, I don't know where y'all at. So how's your relationship with Ian? <laughs> y'all together? You, um, I know you moved out. Are y'all separated? Are y'all divorcing? We, What's going on? We live in separate houses. We still co-parent. Okay. Um, it's, we're kind of like dating, getting to know each other all over again. Good job. Something like that. Okay. It's, yeah. How's the co-parenting going? It's going all right. He's he's at my house quite a bit. Oh, he is? Okay. <laughs> but some days I work at 5 in the morning, so it's convenient to not have to drag the kids out or have them stay over there, get, keep them in their routine. What I like about what you said is that y'all are getting to know each other again. And I think sometimes when couples yeah. get together, they feel like, oh, I, you know what, we already know everything we need to know. And there's actually always room for more talking and growing. That's why I say that at the end of every show. Yeah. And so I love y'all. I've actually, each other. he's been showing me uh, somebody that I've never met. It's good. It's a good thing. 
Good job. I love that. So Ian is also here with us today. Everyone, please welcome Ian back to the show. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Ian, how are you doing? There's guests that stay on my heart and my mind, and you are one of them. Is there still time for this family to come back together? When was the last time you gambled? Don't miss the surprising answer next. She has over $13,000 worth of debt because of her husband's gambling obsession. You're about to lose your wife, you're about to lose your family, you're about to be a by yourself. I may have a little bit of a problem with gambling. How have you been since the last time I saw you? He didn't get any better, we were fighting a lot. I ended up moving out. Are y'all separated, are y'all divorcing? What's going on? He's still co-parent. He's been showing me uh, somebody that I've never met. It's a good thing. Ian, how are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm doing, you know, I'm managing. Yeah. Listen, I, day at a time, every day at a time, you know? One day at a time. Let me tell you something. You have, there's guests that stay on my heart and my mind, and you are one of them. Because people don't understand, because, you know, you were out here joking. They don't understand what a big of a step it was for you to admit that you had a problem. And I think sometimes people are just like, oh, he could have did more. And they don't realize when somebody is struggling with addiction, for even them to make that, I was just so proud of you. So I got to ask you. Yeah, give it up for him. He made a big step. I got to ask you, first thing, when was the last time you gambled? I ain't gambled no more. Good. But ultimately, since. So when was the last time, November? Since the show. What about the Super Bowl? Yeah. Nah. And that's tough, because like I said, it's my birthday week, so. <laughs> but at least you stayed strong. I'm proud of you for staying strong on that. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. You, you told my producers that you were putting in work on yourself but not getting any abs. What did you mean by that? Yeah, as you can see, I still got like a kind of a round figure. <laughs> but this, uh, this mental up here is kind of, it's, I can do, I could probably lift up like probably probably a truck or two. Good, good. So you're getting- you're Mentally working, though, you're, don't, you're, don't put me to the test on the, uh, <laughs> on the actual weights. You, so you're working on your mind. You're working on your, <laughs> you're working on your mental state. Yeah, yeah. Is this the first? Is this your first time in your life working on your mental state and your emotional state? Yeah, it's the first time I really slowed down and uh, recognized that I had more than one problem. Mm. Yes. What else so, did you recognize you need to work on? <laughs> the man in the mirror. Mm. Okay. Good. Good. Ian, you know, something I love about like, you, and I keep telling you, is that what you don't realize is that you have a subtle strength that's going to, that resonates with a lot of people. And I know a lot, a lot of people who use jokes like you do to sort of laugh off things that's going on in their life. But what you do is that you, you, you stop the jokes and you start to have to confront what's going on in your life. And that's, I'm very proud of you for that, brother. I'm very, very proud yeah, of you. Most I'm very most happy most for you. Most I want to know, do you feel like... Do you feel like you're winning at life now? Not really, but it's just beginning. Got it. So you got to do everything one thing at a time. Ian, I got some news for you. You're actually winning at life now. You are. Last time you was here, I had, to, I had to tell you, you weren't winning at life. You actually are winning at life right now. The fact that you are able to say you are working on your mental health, the fact that you are able to say you have not gambled since the last time you were here, the fact that you are still able to acknowledge your wife's needs as she's moved out and be a good co-parent, you are stepping up and being the man that you needed to be. You are winning at life. Yeah. Yeah. You winning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's just that you were chasing such a different win for so long that you don't even recognize this is the win. This the it's win. It's very yeah. good. I really never even thought I would see the day. I never. It's been different. It's been nice. Good job. About that big the book. glow up is real. Talk good job. I love That's hearing that. I say it all the time, I can't fix everyone's problem with one conversation, but I can give the tools to start. And I can see right now that y'all have started, y'all on the right path. Um, Shantia, you are doing what you got to do as a woman for yourself, for your kids, and I respect you for that. Um, and, and Ian, I'm so proud of you. This is the hard part, um, 
people do love you just like me, and I want you to know that there's so much love out there. When you went on social media, people's love was pouring out to you, both of y'all. So people love you, and we're watching you, and we are rooting for you. We were all rooting for you! <laughs> and we are still rooting for you. We are still rooting for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Listen, thank you so much for checking back. Thank you for coming on the show and being vulnerable and sharing your story. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I can't thank you enough. Thank I love y'all. Seriously, I love you so much. Y'all take care you. now. Yeah. Yeah. Be kidding, Me too. All right, everyone. Thank you for being with us. Come back next time, friends, so we can keep talking and growing. I love you all. Mwah.